the cash management of cash we also talked about these uh, um, re uh, receivables and the marketable securities how they are uh, planned and what strat strategies we follow for management of those things and today we will talk about uh, we'll finish our discussion on the management of current assets by talking about a little bit about the management of inventories now when i talk about inventories um, what i uh, basically mean to say is that uh, the uh, we can talk about uh, companies which are engaged in manufacturing as well as the companies which are involved in trading so if i'm talking about manufacturing uh, company then the all the materials used to produce the finished good they uh, categorize as the inventory so the the stocks of manufactured product and the material that make up the product are called the inventories whereas if i am talking about the trading farm that is uh, the ones which are not engaged in uh, manufacturing but let us say buying a, a good and uh, repackaging it uh, and uh, adding some value and then uh, selling it then we can talk about different category of inventory and the category of inventory could be on the finished good now let us talk about uh, the manufacturing farm as such now the manufacturing farm uh, uses these uh, inventories that is one is the raw material raw material is uh, for example if i am talking about steel as a product uh, raw material could be the iron ore could be the coal uh, and as such uh, suppose if i am talking about uh, the um, woolen garments the wool will become the raw material if i am talking about uh, refinery the crude oil will be the raw material now please keep it in mind that raw material uh, of one industry could be the uh, finished good of other industry in industry for example tisco produces let us say uh, steel pipes or flats uh, that is the finished good for tisco but probably for an automotive auto automobile company this thing could be the raw material so uh, depends on the nature of industry where uh, we are looking at the raw material uh, nature could change now but essentially what is a raw material the raw material is that item which uh, is uh, processed to uh, to produce the final good which the company sells so this is a raw material then we and uh, we keep raw material why we need to keep raw material because uh, suppose we do not know for example we do not every day we must be utilizing some amount of raw material so that doesn't mean that uh, um, i'll consume uh, i'll purchase whatever is needed for the day and then consume it and then place order for the uh, next day it doesn't work like that because there is a gap between placing an order and receiving the order so i need to have some stock of raw material so that uh, i can operate within that particular period uh, during which i am uh, waiting for my order to arrive now by the way this time is known as the lead time the time between the placing of an order and receiving of the order is known as the lead time now the uh, uh, i need some raw material to consume during the lead time so uh, that is why i need to have the raw material to be uh, issued to the production department uh, uh, during the lead time now so need that I, that is why i need to have raw material so that my production process does not stop then we have uh, raw material i mean sorry working process in under working process these are the goods which have entered into the production system but they have not come out as uh, finished goods these are called the working process this could be at any stage of completion by the way uh, the raw material if it is 10% processed also called work in process if the raw material is 90% processed that also is called the work in process so uh, the phase between the entry of raw material to the production process to the coming out as finished good the entire uh, process uh, entire stage within that particular period is known as the item is called the work in process now why do we need to have work in process inventory because uh, i need to uh, have inventory at all places so why do i need to have work in process uh, inventory for example let me give you an, give you a very simple example let us say uh, you have a machine here machine 1 the it fits into machine 2 which fits into machine 3 and finally 
the output is produced at machine 4. Okay, now suppose uh, 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 one day we discover that the machine uh, 2 has developed some snag. This machine 2 is uh, has developed some snag and we don't uh, uh, it, it, I, well, we analyzed uh, the snag and it is uh, the experts say that it will take let us say two days to fix the snag. So what do I do? Now because the output of machine 2 fits into machine 3 and which the output of which fits into machine uh, uh, 4, the, uh, that, is, that is likely to be stoppage here and here as well because since nothing is being produced at machine 2, uh, the uh, feeding into the machine 3 and 4 will stop. It uh, until the time that the machine 2 is ready, the snag is removed and the machine 2 is ready. But if we have some amount of uh, work in process inventory here and also some amount of work in process, uh, work in process inventory here, if I can build up some inventory uh, here, I, this inventory can feed into the machine 3 till the time the machine 2 is down. Similarly, machine th uh, 3 can go on producing uh, things using the working process or else the same uh, working process uh, stock here could feed into the machine 4. So by uh, having stocks of working process at each stage of production, we can uh, make each of the in machines uh, or the processes independent of each other. So that is the reason why uh, organizations have working process inventory. Then you have the finished goods inventory and uh, the, uh, the uh, we can never exaggerate the uh, requirement of finished goods because um, uh, the, the, uh, the retailer or uh, the uh, for example these some of the finished good inventory are uh, kept for the purpose of display some of the finished and um, moreover um, the organization is near, not sure about what will be the demand of finished good in the market because this is the pool on the finished good is from the external agency. It comes from the external source. Uh, if the market uh, demand improves, then there will be an automatic pressure on finished good and the organizations, suppose uh, the organization has been selling uh, to the tune of 150 units per day. So the experience of the organization says that the, uh, there will be a demand of 150 units of finished good per day. But if suddenly due to some reason, if the customers start demanding 200 units of product per day, then the company will take uh, quite a bit of time for to buy more raw material to uh, process them and to prepare finished good and deliver to the market. So in that kind of a scenario, if there is a sudden spot in the demand, and the company already is having some amount of finished good at stock, the company need not lose out that opportunity, but can use the finished good stock to um, cater to the increased demand. So that is the reason why also there is always some kind of a display requirement of finished goods. So the finished good inventory, that is why required. And then we have this uh, stores and spares. Now the uh, stores, uh, are otherwise called as the purchase component or another input, important input in the manufacturing process. Now, uh, this is a major component. Why? Because, uh, for example, let us say the when we are talking about, uh, let us say, a car, um, the it can have such, some of the hardware items that could be procured from outside as uh, spares or stores so that you cut down the uh, time to assemble uh, certain things. So the stores and spares, though they don't directly go into the production process, they don't enter directly enter into the production process, but they are a very important part of the inventory uh, because uh, it is needed to speed up the uh, process of uh, delivery of the finished good. So that is also a part of the inventory that we'll be talking about. Now again, like we discussed about the holding of, uh, I mean, uh, cash for various motives. Similar kind of motives are there also for holding of the inventory. Now uh, we could we could hold inventory uh, purely for the purpose of transaction. So what is the meaning of transaction? That we need to have uh sort of every day the, the stores will issue some units of raw material to the production department to be processed into 
feel is good and the whole issue is the uh, stores department doesn't really know uh, the production demand department will demand how many units per day it doesn't know for sure so the stores the stores department usually keeps some uh, and uh, raw material in hand so that if the production department comes out with a requisition of more number of uh, inventory uh, raw material then the stores department can supply so the first thing is uh, to be ready uh, for uh, to be supplied to the production department as at when the need arises so that there is never a stoppage in the production so the if the, the kind of inventory we are holding for that particular purpose is known as the transaction motive the inventory for the transaction motive then the concept of the precautionary motive now look, suppose you take uh, there could be several uh, breakdowns in the system possible which we could not have predicted earlier for example let us say ordinarily we know that uh, if i place my order and uh, today i will be receiving the order in 3 days time that is the uh, delay required uh, delay due to the various processing and the transportation of the good now suppose uh, we discover that the uh, transport owners they have called for a nationwide strike so in that case what will happen is though the processing was complete but the product could not be delivered to me in due time so instead of 3 days it might take let us say 5 days i place an order and i actually receive the order in 5 days so but if i am only holding inventory for transaction motive then i would be holding it only for 3 days so for the re remaining 2 days that the transport owners went on strike and the, the lead time was stretched so i will be out of stock for the 2 days so the uh, stores manager also calculates these things uh, these calculations also they do in their mind and they know that if if you are holding holding inventory for the uh, transaction motive there might be a scenario where this kind of breakdowns could happen in the system and uh, there could be a scenario of a stock out which is a very very uh, on i mean undesirable thing stock out is a very undesirable thing to do in a to have in a business organization so the extra amount of uh, inventory that is being held to avoid this kind of breakdowns or uh, stock out conditions are known as the uh, precautionary motive then we talk about the speculative motive so this is a motive in which you try to make some uh, uh, profit through holding of inventory so that is how can you do that suppose if if uh, uh, you require at any point of time you require to say 500 units to be purchased that should be sufficient for transaction and precaution motive but if suppose your uh, uh, supplier of raw metal offers you a very lucrative discount and uh, on a on a purchase uh, quantity of 2000 units uh, then you would like to take advantage of that uh, discount and you would like to buy more so basically or for a matter let us say if you if you know that the inventory cost is going to go up in future you buy more of the inventory today so these things uh, with a profit making motive from inventory if we are buying certain goods i mean the raw material then it, it could be termed as the speculative motive so um, uh, obviously the transaction and precaution are the if you can take them as in a positive way but there is no harm in uh, having inventory for a speculative purpose as well now the why are we uh, discussing this inventory management at all why is it needed now see when i am talking about uh, the transaction or the precaution or the uh, speculative motive i am i am basically uh, advocating for having inventory now uh, the there are the, there are some positive aspects of having inventory having good amount of inventory there are also some consequences of having uh, big amount of inventory now to to maintain a large size of inventory of raw material and working process or for that matter finished goods it is needed for efficient and smooth production and uh, avoidance of uh, stock out kind of a scenario so an uninterrupted sales could happen due to that now uh, however when we are talking about inventory holding inventory at each stage at the raw material stage at the work in process stage at the finished goods stage each of these things require money so i need to invest more and more money into inventory when i'm talking about holding inventory so the point is when my money is invested in inventory it has a specific cost it has some amount of cost 
so uh, and the, the the money will remain idle so basically cost is in the in the term that it some amount of uh, opportunity cost will be there and again some amount of uh, interest cost will also be there in uh, when we are talking about cost now the point is when we are talking about what is a efficient inventory management and what is ultimately required for an inventory management to be efficient number 1 it should ensure continuous supply of raw material to facilitate uninterrupted production that is there should not be any stoppage in production due to the shortage of raw material that is the first thing that the inventory management should do and you should maintain sufficient stock of raw material in periods of short supply and anticipate price changes so if you um, think that the price of raw material is going to go up you buy more if you think that the price of raw material is going to go down in future then probably you hold up the uh, purchase uh, activity for for the time being and then you maintain sufficient finished goods inventory Uh, so that your sales operation are smooth and uh, you are efficient in your customer service it is never a good experience to have a customer um, uh, walk into your uh, showroom and uh, return empty hand simply because you didn't have a uh, particular uh, item in your store um, see in the competitive environment it is as such difficult for a for to gain a customer uh, more so suppose if you talk about the uh, durable items it is very difficult to because there is so much of competition in the durable market that it is very difficult to uh, uh, convert uh, a customer from one brand to the other brand and it will be really foolish on the part of the organization to uh, give an excuse to the customer that i don't have the product at this point of time but i'll deliver it within 3 days or uh, i'll deliver it in the next day so customers really they don't have so much of uh, i mean brand loyalty as far as these durables are concerned so they will immediately switch to a new product which is available and make a purchase so you stand to lose at that point of time it's not just the current sales that is lost you also lose out on some amount of future sales so you that is the reason why you should be having good amount of finished goods so the uh, you should maintain as a sufficient amount of adequate amount of finished goods so that you don't uh, encounter such kind of a unpleasant scenario you, again we uh, talk about the cost these are uh, to avoid the uh, unpleasant things now we'll talk about the balancing things that is you have to minimize the various cost now that the, we'll just shortly talk about the cost structure now so you have to minimize the carrying cost and you have to minimize the time you have to control the investment in inventories and keep it at a optimum level so that because if you don't keep it at the optimum level there will be so many other consequences of it so you have to keep the cost low you have to keep the investment as well at the at the optimum level now if 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 a inventory management system is able to do all these things then we say that the inventory management is quite efficient in an organization so uh, we then talk about the as as i said uh, we'll be talking something about the cost of inventory now uh, if i'm talking about uh, the see when i'm talking about the to- cost i it basically is the total cost but before i go to the total cost let me talk about the specific cost which are there in inventory one is the ordering cost and the second one is the carrying cost now um, uh, the ordering cost is uh, the requisitioning the order placing the transportation and the inspecting storing and administration these are all the ordering cost and in a way these ordering cost are fixed by nature you per order these are uh, in a way they are fixed uh, cost whereas the carrying cost which includes warehousing that means uh, keeping the sto- stores i mean the keeping the raw metal in the warehouse the handling of the wear, uh, raw material the clerk and the and the staff the insurance the depreciation and obsolescence all of these things are a part of the carrying cost now in the carrying cost a part of it is uh, variable semi variable so a part of it is fixed so uh, the, but for the sake of convention we say that the ordering cost is uh, fixed and the uh, carrying cost is uh, variable by nature now when i am talking about the cost and optimizing the cost 
the what is the main issue here the main, main issue is balancing the cost and benefit so that you get a optimum level of inventory holding now um, uh, while i am discussing the uh, uh, there is a problem here where we will be discussing these balancing issues so um, and, and see suppose i require uh, 5000 units of raw material now um, there is a cost of carrying the inventory there is a cost of ordering the inventory now the issue is suppose if i place uh, per order it cost me 100 rupee now to place the order and to receive the order it cost me 100 rupee now if i um, buy the entire lot 5000 in one order I, it will only cost me 100 uh, un, uh, rupees but if i place uh, the buy the goods in five different orders of 1000 1000 1000 unit each then it, i'm going to place five orders so I'll, i'm going to spend 500 rupees on pl uh, placing and receiving the order but on the other hand there will be something called if i am buying 5000 units in one go then but i am going to use a very small amount of that 5000 rupees then by the time my last unit is consumed if it is uh, uh, perishable goods some of it would have uh, become uh, not so uh, suitable for use into the production uh, it could that could be obsolescence that could be theft that could be pilferage that could be so many other things plus in the while you are buying you don't require 5000 units now 1000 units would have done probably but since you are uh, replacing an order for 5000 units your entire money the purchase cost for 5000 rupees is blocked which is now the amount that you're blocking in the inventory is uh, you're losing an uh, opportunity uh, i mean the opportunity cost on that at the same time you are financing that from the uh, source uh, from the short term sources or from the banks so the you have to pay some interest on the amount you are blocking in that 5000 rupees so now you need to strike a balance between these two things to be able to know that what this should this is what should be my optimal level of inventory now how do we do it we do it by uh, in a stepwise manner number one first we the optimum ordering level that means how much should be ordered the thing that i was just talking about now the optimum ordering level is to be computed by uh, uh, using the time required to place the order and receive the goods. So basically, I'm going to compute the lead time and the, the consumption pattern. Now, second, the uh, this optimum ordering quantity it can, uh, um, which is also known as the reordering quantity, can also be done through uh, technical a scientific method, which is called the EOQ, economic order quantity and uh, where we take into account the ordering cost the carrying cost and all that and then uh, we decide on what should be the optimum level of inventory so basically what i'm trying to do is how i'm trying to balance between how much should be ordered and when should the stock be ordered now the if we if i'm able to answer these two questions probably i am at the i'm, I'm going moving towards an efficient inventory management system Okay, so um, we'll, we'll uh, approach this uh, optimization of inventory uh, through a manual trial and error, error approach. Then we'll talk about the EOQ approach. Now, to do that, I, there is a small case study that I am presenting here. Number one, that uh, uh, there is an organization which requires annually 24,000 units. So I'm putting my annual consumption as uh, called C then the price per unit p is no is uh, 15 rupees the cost per order which i'm calling it as o that is uh, rupees 45 and uh, there is a carrying cost which is 10 percent on the purchase price so if i talk about uh, the carrying cost it could be expressed as a percentage of the purchase price or it could be as a um, uh, simple as a rupee so if i express it as a rupee it is uh, i will be i is equal to 10% on my purchase cost which is 10% on rupees 15 is my purchase price so carrying cost per unit would be 1 uh, rupee and 50 pence so this is the carrying cost per unit but otherwise you can call it as a 10% carrying cost now the num uh, question is 
my requirement is 24000 units now if if i require 24000 units requires of 24000 units then how do i uh, go about uh, uh, placing the order for this 24000 units now the point is i can uh, go for a single order now here i can go for a single order or i can go for two orders in a year three orders in a year four orders in a year likewise i can go for let us say i'm uh, i'm going for trial and error so i uh, use various combinations so let us talk about 24 orders in a year so which means that if i am placing one order per year then how what is the quantity uh, that i am purchasing in each order i am purchasing to entire lot of 24000 units in a in the entire order now if i am buying you can approach it like this if i am placing two orders for 24000 uh, units each order is 12000 units or you can approach it like this if you are buying 8000 units per order how many orders you have to place you have to place three orders you can approach it uh, through any of these methods that is the order the number of orders is equal to the uh, annual consumption divided by the order size so this will give you the number of orders n so if my my c is it's there is no question of if my c is 24000 if i want to buy let us say 6000 per order then how many orders i have to place i have to place four orders now see here four orders this is how it has been computed so the number of orders uh, starting from 1 to 24 and uh, then accordingly we have computed the order sizes order sizes at 24000 and uh, like that going till 1000 or uh, units per order now we know no then we talk about the average inventory so what is average inventory the average inventory the average inventory works out to average inventory works out to uh initial inventory ending inventory by 2 since there is no question of ending inventory here what i am trying what i am doing is just q by 2 here the q by 2 this is the q q by 2 itself is the uh, my and the average inventory so because i am going to charge uh the interest cost on the average inventory so 24000 divided uh, by 2 12000 12000 divided by 2 is likewise these are the q by 2 figures the average inventory then we i as i said there are two kinds of cost number one is carrying cost now carrying cost is the cost of carrying the inventory which is uh, 10% on the purchase price so basically how many units i have if uh, for the first case if you are carrying 12000 units the carrying cost would have been 10% on purchase price or you simply simply because we have computed already 1 rupee 50 paise this simply 12000 into 1.5 that is 18000 that is what is given here so because we have already computed the uh carrying cost per unit as 1.5 so we multiply each of these uh, average inventory figure with 1.5 so that you get the carrying cost per uh, carrying cost of the inventory for the period okay so these are all multiplied with the q2 uh, into 1.5 now the ordering cost the ordering cost is the uh, number of orders that you are placing into the your cost per order is 45 now you see uh, in the first case we are placing the order for in the first place we are placing the order for one that is that will be one order so 1 into 45 this is 45 here similarly in case of uh, so here uh, the uh, one order into uh, 45 then two orders into 45 95 Three orders into forty-five, that is one thirty-five. Likewise, we have computed till the end, and then we have added up the carrying cost and the ordering cost. So the, here, please keep it in mind that in the total cost calculation here, we will not bring into account the purchase cost because that is. Irrelevant cost at this point of time. We are talking about the uh, 
uh, while we are talking about the inventory cost, we will talk about the variable cost and the fixed cost. But if I am talking about, I am talking about the quantity discount, probably then we will have to talk about the uh, purchase cost. Now see, I add up the uh, uh, fourth row and the fifth row. Okay, so eighteen thousand carrying cost plus ordering cost fifty forty five. So that makes it the total cost is eighteen thousand forty five. In the for the for the six order under the six order six uh, order uh, six orders per annum, the ordering cost is uh, the carrying cost is forty five hundred. The ordering cost is one hundred and eighty. So that makes it sorry one hundred thirty five. That makes it sorry six. Uh, the three thousand and two hundred seventy. That makes it three two seven zero. Uh, and likewise, in uh, in case of twenty four orders, the carrying cost is seventy five seven fifty, and the ordering cost is one thousand and eighty. The total is one uh, eight three zero. Now this is how is your total cost lo looks like. Now see, just follow the total cost from one to twenty four. What you do? A peculiarity you see, there is a gradual fall from uh, order number one to two to three to four. To six, to ten, to twelve, and then twenty. But beyond twenty orders per uh, annum, the cost again increases to from eighteen hundred to eighteen thirty, and again. Uh, so the this is a special thing then, which means at uh, the lowest cost is happening here. The lowest cost is happening at this point of time, and there is a peculiar thing happening also that the ordering cost is equal to the. Carrying cost. So the cost of placing an order is equal to carrying the average cost of carrying the average inventory, and then at that point of time the cost is minimal, and then subsequently after that the cost also registers a change. So the trial and approach uh, 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 error. I mean the trial and error approach. Uh, there tells me that the best uh, order size is twenty or twenty. The, I mean the best uh, uh, order size is twelve hundred. So that how many orders I place in a year? I place twenty orders in a year because that is what is going to drive my cost to the minimum possible. That is eighteen hundred. Mm, I hope this thing is clear with you. Then we talk about the same problem with the EOQ approach or the economic order quantity approach. We'll uh, first look at the uh, graph here. Now you see in the manual trial and error approach, we saw that the there is a peculiarity that the carrying cost and ordering cost are same, and the, uh, at the point of uh, minimum cost, the carrying cost and ordering cost are same. Now see, <coughs> please look at this particular graph. In the graph, you see that the uh, the black line is there. Are, there are three lines here. There is a black line. There is a blue line. There is a red line. Now the black line indicates my holding cost. The blue line indicates the ordering cost, and the red line, which is a uh, which is a cost curve, which is derived from both these blue and black curve. And that is a U-shaped curve, which is the total cost curve. Now, uh, as I told you, that the holding cost is a variable kind of a cost. That is, it and higher the on the uh, here on the x-axis, we are uh, um, uh, plotting the uh, order quantity, and on the y-axis, we are plotting the annual cost. So. Because the holding cost directly varies uh, in proportion to the qu uh, quantity we are ordering, the bl uh, black uh, line is a uh, black uh, uh, figure is a straight line. So, because with increased in inventory, uh, the black the holding cost will also linearly increase. However, the ordering cost will gradually fall because, as I told you. Your number of orders, because you are ordering more and more quantity, the so number of orders uh, is reducing. Because the number of orders is re reducing, the cost will also come uh, down. So the ordering cost will be in the blue line. With increasing order quantity, this blue line will gradually fall. And there is a point of crossover for this holding cost black line and the ordering cost blue line. And interestingly, the total cost. 
which is a U shaped curve because of the behavior of these two other costs. Uh, the minimum point of the total cost lies at the point of intersection between the holding cost and the ordering cost. This is something that you can see graphically. And this is something of, actually we have seen through trial and error. In trial and error, this is also the same. The low, lowest cost 1800 and uh, the point of intersection is 900 for both carrying cost as well as ordering cost. So let us now uh, develop a formula to calculate the uh, instead of going approaching this problem through uh, I mean uh, trial and error we can have a formula to approach this uh, uh, solution scientifically that is called the EOQ which is the economic order quantity and uh, the economic order quantity goes by this formula of 2CO by I again what is C as we discussed in the this case C is my annual consumption O is my ordering cost, I is my uh, cost of uh, carrying cost and we have computed this carrying cost on a, on a uh, on, on the per unit basis which we can plug into this particular equation. So now we multiply 2 into 24,000 into 45 by 1.5 and that works out to 1200 units. Now see, here in case of trial and error also, the, we reach the maximum, the best order size to be 1200 units. Now also through EOQ, we are reaching this 1200 units. So which means, if I plot it on this graph, this will be my, this, this point should be my 1200 rupees, I mean sorry, 1200 units. So I should be, the if I, if I place an order of 1200 units, then the, uh, uh, inventory cost will be the total cost will be the minimum. So this is how the EOQ works. Now the point is uh, we talked about the uh, quantity discount. Now what is the quantity discount? There are times when the firm is able to take advantage of quantity discount uh, when the supplier uh, let us say uh, offers that uh, if we buy in a bulk quantity then the supplier will give us a some kind of a discount. Now see, the while we are talking about uh, discount, we again in, need to include the uh, the uh, purchase uh, cost here because here C into P is purchase price into C. But in, when we talk about the discount, uh, the discount the P will be different. So that is the reason why we need to talk about the purchase price as well when when we talk about the quantity discount. Now the point is, sorry. The point is suppose in this example, this example that we are seeing the, with the same parameters. Now what are the parameters? Let me just write down here. The parameters are that the company, the company's uh, annual requirement is 24,000 units. The uh, ordering cost is uh, 45 per order. The interest, the sorry, the carrying cost is uh, let us say uh, 15 just now given and um, we know that the EOQ EOQ economic order quantity under this circumstance is 1200 now the company has come up with a plan that if we buy if we if we do not buy a 1200 but if we buy so my Q star if we if I buy a new uh, quantity of let us say 2000 uh, units per order 2000 or more. So there is no need to consider the more part. We'll talk about the 2000 units. So if I buy 2000 or in multiples of 2000, the the uh, supplier will offer me a discount of 5% on the uh, uh, price of the inventory. I mean the purchase price. It will give me the 5% uh, discount. Should I accept this kind of a discount? That is the question. The question is whether it is okay to accept this kind of discount or it is okay to reject this kind of a discount. So how do we do that? To do that, let me tell you that now you have to go for the total cost as given here. Now the total cost is, so or let me let me calculate the total cost under, uh, under the, the discount and also under the, uh, under the, uh, this thing, I mean the, uh, EOQ. Now my total cost here will be 
uh, the uh, purchase price which is C is 24,000 into P is uh, this was 1.5 oh sorry purchase price was uh, purchase price was uh, given in our previous case was 15 okay i was 10 percent of 15 so that was 1.5 okay so 24000 into 15 okay c into p plus c by q into o how many orders i am placing when i am going for eoq i am placing 20 orders into the uh, cost of uh, order uh, cost per order which is 45 then we add up with this the average inventory which is 1200 by uh, 2 that is 600 sorry 600 into i i is how much my 1.5 so this is how it should look like so this works out to Give me some time. Let me see how much it works out to. Which is This is simply 360,000. Earlier we had computed while we were doing the uh, EOQ, we talked about this uh, carrying cost and ordering cost, both were 900. So this is my um, total add up 1800 rupees, what's my cost? So this is 3 lakh. 61,800. Now under discount, let me see under discount uh, how it will work out. My total cost under discount will be, total cost will, under discount will be, now see 5% discount I am going to get on uh, fif, uh, on 15 rupee. So on 15 rupee if it is 5% discount, what will be the um, purchase price now? The purchase price will be 14.25. So my purchase price here will be 14.25. So that works out to, so my C is 24,000 units into P that is 14.25 plus here my ordering cost and this thing will be different. So the, my C by uh, 24,000 divided by Q is 2,000 because I am going to order in 2,000 lots into the ordering, uh, ordering cost is let us say how much 45 plus I have Q by 2 again 2000 divided by 2 Q by 2 into my carrying cost per unit 1.5 which we have already computed. So this is my uh, 240,000 I mean sorry 24,000 into 14.25 that works out to 3,42,000 plus this is how many orders in a year? 12. This is 12 orders in a year. 12 into 45 and the cost is 540. In fact, we can we could have picked up this thing uh, from your table. Huh? This is 540, 12 orders in a year, 540 and 1500. We pick up this thing from the table. So 1500. So my total cost here is how much?
थ्री लैख फोर्टी फोर थाउजेंड फोर्टी थ्री लैख फोर्टी फोर थाउजेंड फोर्टी सो यू नाउ टेल मी वेदर यू विल गो विद यूक्यू और यू वेदर यू विल गो विद क्वान्टिटी डिस्काउंट now it is clear that if my eoq under eoq it is going to cost me 3 lakh 61800 rupees the inventory uh, uh, cost will be 3 lakh 61800 under discount it is going to cost me 3 lakh 44040 rupees so obviously i am going to stick to discount and discard the eoq option there so this is how we talk about this uh, optimizing the inventory cost now we we'll talk about the uh, buffer stock or the safety stock now see uh, as we discussed the reorder point uh, eoq is the level of minimum level of uh, inventory now suppose i place an inventory i consume and then place an order and i receive the order here so it is replenished but the point is if i actually uh, or place an order when my inventory is finished then uh, 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 and uh, i am not operating under just in just in time jit so what will happen is uh, for some days it will be i will be out of stock so uh, what i have to do is i have to decide what is going to be my reorder point my reorder point will de depend on the average usage that i have and the lead time i have so my reorder point is nothing but the lead time into the average usage so this is the level of uh, uh, i mean the uh, the point when i am going to order so this is uh, this is going to be my reorder uh, reorder point so lead time is let us say 3 days and average usage let us say 50 day i am uh, 50 units i am consuming 50 units per day and it takes me it takes 3 days or weeks whatever you decide 3 days or weeks so 3 uh, days to uh, get the order so the my uh, i uh, my reorder point will be 3 uh, uh, 3 into 50 that is 150 so which means let us say my my eoq level is 500 so i go on consuming i gradually go on consuming along this line my average inventory is uh, 500 by 2 which is fair 250 this line the first dotted line is fair 250 so this is my average now i again go on consuming and the moment i hit the 150 line the second dotted line when my Uh, inventory uh, reaches 150 i'll place the order here i'll place the order now uh, when i place the order here at this point at this level this is my reorder level i at this when uh, point if i place the order what will happen it will take another 3 days to receive the order ordinary circumstance there are no st uh, strikes and lockouts and any such of things so under ordinary circumstance in 3 days time my order should reach me so by the time i am at the end of 3 days i would have consumed 150 units by then so i am absolutely at zero level of inventory when the new lot of inventory arises uh, sorry arrives so here i'll receive the 500 units of inventory under eoq so again i'll go back to 500 so the process continues again i'll start consuming and uh, at 150 i'll reorder and then by the time i am at zero my next order comes so this is the reorder point under certainty but what if the there is uncertainty regarding lead time there is also uncertainty regarding the average usage so both of these things can stretch like the usage could increase that is one reason the second the lead time could also stretch so the uh, based on these two i need to have some safety stock or the buffer stock now um, to show that uh, the how uh, we we'll deal with the deal with the safety stock Uh, the reorder point here is the lead time into the average usage plus the safety stock now uh, let us say that i keep the safety stock at a level of uh, uh, let us say 75 now what is this 75 that is the um, that, I, that is that is my subjective assessment that in that there could be a stretch of lead time by let us say one day or let us say there could be the stretch of uh, the average usage could increase so i keep a minimum level of 75 at all points of time 75 and then i uh, set up my reorder point 
75 is my plus set so my set stock is lead time is 3 average lead time is 3 uh, into average usage is 50 so 53 into 50 is 150 plus the set stock that is 275 so here my reorder point is 75 plus 150 that becomes 225 so because i am having a set stock of uh, 75 and over and above that i am ordering an amount of 500 as under uq so my maximum inventory will go up to 575 and as gradually start consuming the moment i reach 225 level i'll place an order okay and if uh, nothing uh, happens nothing out of the ordinary happens um, by the time i am at the 75 units of stock my the next level of my uh, a, a order will arrive bringing me to 575 again now suppose here i place an order and then after that there is a uh, some disruption happens either in terms of lead time or in terms of average usage so i uh, consume uh, i'll uh, go into dive deep into my safety stock so i'll be using my safety stock by the time my safety stock probably uh, is at 10 st stocks or 15 stocks or uh, zero stock depending on the nature of exigency i will receive the uh, next order that is the eoq however if i am truly unlucky probably i could in spite of having a safety stock i could still run into the shortage i mean uh, uh, the stock out condition if i am really unlucky otherwise this thing should do so this is how we talk about the buffer stock or the safety stock and then how we decide on the reorder point now we talk about the various control systems that have been designed to uh, the control the inventory now um, we all know under if we uh, go into the stores department of any manufacturing organization and to list out the inventories they could run into hundreds the inventory the various components of uh, i mean the good the finished good or the raw material they could run into hundreds of items so what kind of a control system we need to impose are we going to control uh, all the categories of item all the hundred items in the same way or not um, it, uh, there has been lot of study on how we are going to control the various inventories and based on those uh, we are just discussing that there could be several other methods we are just discussing some of the very few popular methods the most popular method is the abc some we call it always better control so abc inventory control system what we do here is basically you might have heard something about called a pareto's law like uh, the uh, the the significant uh, few and the trivial many the pareto's law is uh, the uh, significant few and the trivial many which means that the um, inventory which are very essential or which are uh, very significant in uh, in number i mean significant in value they are uh, lesser in number whereas the ones which are more in number are not very significant in terms of value so uh, going by that you could have a simple graphic representation of abc analysis where see you categorize item a item b and item c you can look at the graph that item a Uh, on the y axis i am talking about the cost of the inventory on the y x axis i am talking about the percentage of units now you see the item a which are high valued items now see they are a items are total if your total inventory is 100 rupee the item a item uh, a goods are 70 rupees but their number is only uh, 15 to 20 the number is uh, between 15 to 20 so 15 to 20% of the uh, items contribute to 70% by value so these are very uh, important items item a and whereas we, when we talk about item b they contribute another 20% in terms of value from 70 to 90 we talk about that is b whereas they uh, uh, again 20 to 25 5% by number and 20% by value that is the b and the trivial many the item c they are Uh, very many numbers like more than 50% they are in number around 50% uh, 55% by number whereas they uh, contribute to 10% by value so obviously you are not going to subject uh, i mean you are not going to apply the similar kind of control techniques to item a and b and c because item a will require strict control because there are very high valued items item c you can have a relaxed kind of a control system for item c 
okay then uh, this is about abc then you have the ved analysis uh, vital essential and desirable now like uh, vital are the goods which you cannot do without desirable are the goods probably you, uh, you which you can do without so vital essential desirable so once you categorize your inventory into uh, ved then you can uh, strict very strict control for v and lax control for d uh, similar kind of a inventory control system is fsn fsn is uh, fast moving slow moving and non moving items now there have been uh, for example uh, many kinds of control systems were like a two bin system like uh, in a two bin system what they do is they uh, have two bins uh, bin 1 and bin 2 and in bin 1 the they put all the first moving items and in the bin 2 probably all other items so bin 1 a different kind of a control system bin 2 a different kind of a control system so you can have that kind of a control system here so fsn vid and all those things um talk about the kind of uh, control systems you are going to adopt for each of them now you can have a system where you don't uh, require inventory now how can you have that kind of a system for example you have a just in time uh, so if you are implementing this erp systems uh, and this are not the erp the mrp systems the um, then you can uh, talk about this is a japanese concept where you do with do uh, i mean do you do away with the inventory so basically you don't have to invest money in the inventory and as and when the things are required the same time the uh, procurement will be done so just in time is a very very difficult concept uh, to i mean uh, i mean if you have if you if you have that good relationship with your uh, suppliers <coughs> if you are able to predict all the uh i mean the requirements in advance in uh, through the computerized systems and all that so uh, you can implement the just in time system the just in time system originated uh, uh, from japan and it has been very successfully used there so the just in time system minimizes the requirement of inventory um completely so you don't have to hold any inventory uh, at any stage be it raw material stage be it uh, finished goods stage or be it the uh, work in process stage because you have this mrp system in place then we talk about the <coughs> outsourcing now um, many times the organizations what they do is because raw material is being supplied by uh, by a third party by your supplier many organizations do one what one strategy is to acquire the source of raw material or move closer to the source of raw material that is one strategy and the other strategy is not to uh, engage in the procurement of raw material that much but to completely outsource them so that will save you a lot of botheration and you can uh, uh, focus on your core activities so that is the concept of the outsourcing now all these uh, uh, control systems uh, could be put in place uh, through the uh, concept of this uh, mrp or the Um, material resource planning uh, if, if you have uh, put the mrp in place you, we can have a good abc control or ved or the fsn or the just in time which could be uh, practiced if we have the control systems which are computerized and you are actually able to monitor the movement of inventory from uh, uh, one system to the other system at the same time the Uh, po uh, position of inventory at each place that will be displayed in in your invent com computerized uh, inventory control systems so you exactly know for sure at uh, what stage how many uh, stocks are live what will be the requirement in future how many items will be idle what is going to be probably the wastage and the pilferage so everything will be uh, depicted on your computer screen if you have a efficient computerized inventory control system now uh, through all these uh, we can uh, actually minimize the cost of holding the inventory and carrying the inventory and we can have a efficient inventory management systems which contribute towards the profitability and growth of the organization 
so i guess we are at the end of uh, today's session thank you